Hi everyone, I'm Peter and welcome to my class on scripting. How would you do scripting? Well, there's pros and cons to scripting. Positive side of things? When you write a script, it basically captures all the steps that you perform from pre-processing over modeling to evaluation. Also, when you write a script, you really only write it once and you can run it multiple times with no extra cost. It's also very easy to create a variant of a script in order to test some theories. For example, tweaking some parameters of a classifier or swapping out a classifier completely. And the best thing about scripting is you don't need to compile anything like you would have to with Java code. On the not so good side of things, you will have to do programming. You need to familiarize yourself with the APIs of the libraries that are involved and writing code is usually slower than clicking in the GUI. Now what scripting languages will we cover in this class? We will cover Jython, Python and Groovy. Jython is basically a pure Java implementation of Python 2.7 which runs solely in the Java virtual machine. This means it gives you access to all the Java libraries that are in the class path. If you're using Python code then it has to be pure Python. No native libraries like for example NumPy would use. As in Python, we'll be using Python 2.7 and we'll be invoking Wicker through Python 2.7. It gives you then all the access that you need to the full Python library ecosystem. At the end, we'll be touching briefly on Groovy, which is a Java-like syntax and also runs in the Java virtual machine. And once again, it gives you access to all the Java libraries on the class path. In order to demonstrate why Python might be a good choice of programming language for doing the scripting is simply by comparing what Java code would look like and Python code would like for doing the same thing. So what we're trying to do is simply outputting 10 times Hello Wacker MOOC. So looking at the Java code here is you have the outer class definition, then you have your main method. Inside the main method you have your for loop where you finally output stuff. In Python this whole thing collapsed to a two-liner. You simply iterate from 0 to 9 and then print the whole thing out. Done. Now in order to have Jython support in Wicker we need to install a package. So I'm going to start up Wicker and the package manager. I'm presuming that you're already familiar with the package manager. And we need to install Tiger Jython 1.0.0, not the latest version. Gave me a bit of grief lately. Um, so we scroll down to Tiger Jython and if you want to install a specific version if you can simply open up in the repository version tab column and you can sort of like get a drop down box and select simply 100 instead of 101. I've already done that and um, for plotting light on in lesson 3 we also want to use jfree chart and for that reason you want to install the jfree chart off screen renderer library not version 102 is fine after we've done that we have to restart basically wicker and then under the tools menu we will have a jython console menu item which brings up a little user interface for writing and running jython scripts the first time around it takes a little bit longer because it analyzes all the libraries that are basically in your class path. Okay, here's our little interface. So what you can see here is, um, here's basically where you write your script. Um, down here you would see errors and so on, and output that your script generates, and you execute your script with the green triangle up here. You can also turn debug mode on and off, uh, which allows you basically to step through the program that you've written, you can also set uh, breakpoints up here, which allow you to stop at certain points in the program and then analyze, for instance, what the values for variables are and so on. When running things, I usually run multiple scripts in parallel. So on the preferences, I usually have a smaller font and I'd rather use tabs than just a single one. So let's just revisit our really, really simple example that we had previously, where we were just outputting our Hello world, more or less. Okay, so when we run this, not in debug mode for the time being, I'm just gonna run that. 
we'll see there's an output from 1 to 10, hello Wicker Mook. Now, if we are in debug mode, once again toggling it, then we can define how fast it actually goes through, and we can simply go through and run it. And you can see the instruction pointer is sort of like toggling between those two lines, and you can also see over here when you open up variables and types that the variable i gets incremented. So this is sort of like the first quick introduction to the Tiger Jython interface. When you're writing code, you have to find, of course, information. And the best information on Java libraries like Weka is using a Java doc. So you can have either the online documentation on the SourceForge homepage, which is always the latest one, or if you're not working with the latest version, then you can simply go into the doc directory in your Java in your Wicca installation and use that. Also, coming with your release or snapshot that you've installed, you will find a Wicca examples.zip file which contains quite a lot of example code that should get you going in how to use APIs and whatnot of Wicca. And last but not least, also check out the Wicca manual PDF document which in the appendix under the using the API section you will find most of the important APIs in Waker explained and how to use them. Of course I promised that we're going to write a little script and what we're going to do is we're going to load data and filter it and print it out. However since all the installations of Waker will be different around the world in order to find data sets I'll be using a little trick I'll be using an environment variable to point to the directory where I've stored my data sets. So I'm going to close Wacker for the time being. And you can see here on my desktop in the data directory I have various data sets you'll be downloading throughout the class and we want to point to that directory. And I'm going to basically for this purpose I'm going to copy that path and I'm going to add an environment variable. So I'm going to go into the advanced settings, environment variables, and I'm going to create one called MOOC underscore data and paste that in there. Okay, okay, and okay. Close that dialog again. And we can close that too. And then we can start up Wicker again. Now we're starting up our Jython console again. Once it's there. So first of all, we will have to import some classes to actually do stuff. So first of all, we actually want to load data and we'll be using the data source class for that, abbreviated to DS. The filter for filtering a data set and the remove filter to do the actual work. The OS library is a Jython slash Python library which gives us access to the operating system, like for example environment variables and so on. So in order to utilize the MOOC data environment variables that I've just configured, I'm using the OS environment get method, um, the OS separator method forward or backward slash, depending on what operating system you're running, plus the name of the data set, in this case Iris. So I'm basically loading that. Then we're going to configure our filter. So we want to have a remove filter. We want to remove the last attribute, which is done via the minus R last options. Then we are telling the filter about what the data actually looks like so it can configure itself internally and then we're using the filter class to actually push through the data through our remove filter and get a new data set and finally we're going to output that new data set in the console so when we run this now we get a lot of output here and when we scroll to the top of it we can see that the relation name has changed with the filter setup and there's no longer any class attribute. In this first lesson, we have installed Tiger Jython. We've seen that Python is actually very easy to read and write, quite short as well compared to Java. 
learned about where we can find API documentation, and we wrote our first JavaScript. Well done. See you next time.